fluoride in the water. Conspiracy theory? Hmm. It's it's certainly a hot topic. Even like a political topic. Like this is it everywhere is. right now. Got a little bit should, of science, a little bit of politics. Yeah. Should we be putting fluoride in the water for everybody to consume? Okay. What Welcome is to Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Salazar. I'm Dr. Brad Weening. What is fluoride? So fluoride is the ionic version of fluorine. Yeah, it's the ionic version right. of fluorine. That symbol would be F minus. Yes. What I got on my Where, first history test. Where does it live in the periodic table? Ooh, fluoride is at number nine. Number nine. Number nine. The most uh, reactive. It's super world. reactive, and like you. It, it, That's usually your line to me. And it's, it's in the halogens, right? It's super deadly. Fluorine, right. that is. The right. fluorine gas will right. kill you. And so in that group is so fluorine, and then you add you add eight to that, and it's chlorine at seventeen. Yeah. And then bromine at thirty-five, at yeah. eighteen, and at eighteen more you get fifty-three to iodine. Yeah. And then the last two, much lesser known, astatine. What'd you call me? And tennessine. Now you know the halogens, yeah, I kids. I play pickleball. Welcome to chemistry. All right. So fluorine, it is extremely Super reactive, reactive, extremely deadly, and definitely people who work in an industry where they're using fluorine or fluorocarbons yep. are at risk for problems with that. And because However, it, because it's a reactive, that's why it makes salts. That whole yeah. class, right? Yeah. So calcium fluoride and then sodium chloride, and we've talked about those before. Yeah. That it's so reactive, so it latches onto things that have a positive charge. However, the fluoride version yes. of this is super duper safe. Right. It's very hard to do harm to yourself right. with fluoride. You would have to ingest a lot of it. And what are some of the complications that can happen if you get too much fluoride in your body? Right, so probably number one is fluorosis. So you can yes. have fluorine deposited in your teeth and in your bones. So in your teeth, it can make them look a little bit brown or stained. And in your bones, it can make your bones a little bit brittle because right. it competes for spots. Yeah, it, it competes. It, it is competitive in because it is reactive. Yes. Yeah. And it can affect your bones, make your bones brittle, make them break. That's sort of our world. Right. Now, how many times have you seen uh, fluorosis? In, in bones? Patient, in a patient. I don't think I've ever diagnosed it. No. I, I guess I theoretically could have missed it. I mean, but but I, I think it's, it's when it, it's called fluorosis, I think it's much more severe. So I have yeah. not seen it. No. I no. have never seen it. I've never had a person with that diagnosis or history on right. their history. And it's, it's naturally occurring in, in water from wells and some foods as well as in the air and some uh, polluted areas. So foreign can come from other places, oh, yes. but mostly in developed world, um, it's in the water. So yeah. why? Well, that's a good point. If you're someone who's saying, oh God, get the fluorine out of the water. Yeah. Well water has fluoride in it. Well, and what's interesting about that is that's kind of how we figured out that maybe we should put it in the water. So in the 30s in the U.S., um, there was a dentist in Colorado who noticed a lot of these patients were coming with, with stained teeth. Mm -hmm. So he was like, well, what's unique about these people? And started looking at their water and said, well, they have fluorosis. So it's, it's deposits in your teeth that makes them look a little bit stained. And then he noticed, hey... These kids have a lot less tooth decay than all the other kids. Right. So then in the mid 40s, they did the very first study was in Grand Rapids, Michigan, where they said, let's put some fluorine in the water. They, they fluoridated fluoride. that. Fluoride. Fluoride, yeah, they one milligram per liter mm -hmm. and followed them for 15 years. And this group had 60% less tooth decay. Bing, so they said, okay, let's start adding fluoride to water. Profound benefit at a very nominal cost. It was easy to do. Nowadays, the cost is estimated in the 50 cent to $3 per person per year. And municipalities build in uh, infrastructure that helps test it, sometimes multiple times a day. Mm -hmm. They've reduced the rate to 0 0.7 milligrams per liter to help control this very tightly because they don't want to have overexposure to fluorine. The estimated risk number is closer to like 10 mm -hmm. um, 10 milligrams per day, or 10 grams per day, sorry. Um, to do damage. Per liter, yes. Yeah. And you'd have to drink 14 liters of water in order to get that, so. And so some of you might be thinking, well, you know, that, that was, you know, 80 years ago. Yep. Do we really need fluoride now? Because there is dental hygiene is so much better now. Sure. There's so many products in your available with fluoride in it, in your mouth washes. Yep. Fluoride is available to be used, so why should, we bothering add, why should we bother adding it to the water nowadays? Right, so the thought is that it's, it's low risk, low cost, significant benefit. It is not a substitute for brushing your teeth though. So even if you were of someone like, I'm not brushing my teeth anymore, I'm just gonna drink lots of fluoridated water, that's not gonna be enough. Yeah. But the other risk that we didn't get to, not only fluorosis, but there are some studies that show in pregnant women, if they had elevated levels of this in their urine, the IQs of their children were slightly lower, like five points, yeah. as well as some studies have not causation, association of elevated fluoride and increased fluorine consumption with things like reduced um, iodine competition as well as free 
thyroid hormone. So it can affect your thyroid hormone negatively, but these are, are often in very, very high levels and again, not very, very well regulated studies. Right. So I would say rather than worrying about if it's added to your water, if you're living somewhere off well water, make sure that water is tested regularly to make sure the fluoride's not too high in that water. Agreed. Because of controlled municipal water, the fluoride levels are so low. So the question that people are asking is, should we stop adding? Well, is it added all, to all water across so, the United so States? No, oh, in the U.S., I'm not sure. I don't think so. But no. in Canada, even, it's not. Yeah. So a lot of parts go back. A lot of parts of B.C., even Calgary does not. Um, Calgary, Alberta does not fluoridate their water anymore. Yeah. So a bunch of municipalities have said, you know what, we're not going to do this yeah. anymore. So it's not everywhere. Not yeah. everywhere does it. And should we be? Should we be insisting on our politicians to get the fluoride out of our water? To be honest, I think it's a controversial issue. I think it's a low-cost mechanism that provides significant benefit. What I'd like to do is do a study of all the places that don't have fluoride mm -hmm. in the water, and is their tooth decay rate way higher? Yeah. And, if, and if that's true, then I'd say, well, it's a low-cost measure to help protect people. If, the, if there's no difference, then, then you can save the money and reduce the risk. Even if the risk is really low, then yeah. you could theoretically reduce it to zero. Right. I, um, I would think not. I would think that you know, tooth decay, the, the effects... What's causing tooth decay is a lot of the junk food, Agreed. Sweets, can sugary drinks. Yeah, those are the things. That's where the money is. If you're really trying to fight it, I don't think the fluoride in the water is doing much right now. Yeah, I don't think so. But is it something that I'm going to actively grab a sign, walk on the street, and pick it against? No. You, there's a you're lot. You're not going to get a placard. No, I'm not going to dress up like a molar. No. I think there's. I'm a, a reactive fluoride molecule. I think there's a lot of other social things that you should be concerned about. You know, yeah. vaping, pollution. <laughs> Whatever. Uh, global warming. Uh, there's a long list of things that are more important, I think, than spending your energies worrying about the fluoride that's being added to your water. That's my personal view. Right. But if this is your view, actually, leave a comment. Let us know what you think about, about putting this stuff in our water. And I think it comes down to, in our society nowadays, people kind of don't want to be told what to do no. anymore, like whether it comes no. to this yeah. or medications or vaccinations or whatever. And I think it's, that's what makes it a hot topic. So we're not taking away your right to have an opinion on this. And mm. who knows where public policy will go. But I think if you're someone who didn't have a strong opinion about it, was starting to worry about it, I don't think you have to worry about it. And if you really, really don't want your water, you can get it out. Brita okay. filters, those filters that you yeah. use, they don't work. Oh. The filters in the fridge, you know, when oh. you have no, that doesn't oh. work. The molecule is so small, those activated carbon filters don't work. What? If you want to get the fluoride out of your water, you need a reverse osmosis filter. Mm. Okay. okay. You can distill your water. That's where you boil the water. The condensation is con collected. Everything is out of it when you do it that way. That you seems like it. a big job. That's a lot, but you, have, you can get a distiller. Okay. And there's some alumina-activated filters that can do it too. But your regular filters won't Not get the doing it. Up. It's good to know. There you go. Nice. Now you know. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment about fluoride. Keep smiling if you have fluoride in your water. And remember, you are in charge of your own. We'll see you next time.